In this video, we will review how to utilize cell ranges and references in formulas and functions. First of all, let's review relative, mixed, and absolute references. Here, we have an example of a relative reference, and you can see if you click in these cells, you can see that these cells refer to J1, K1, and L1. And if I copy this formula across, it does change relative on location. You know, there's nothing there restricting it. We don't have any dollar marks to make anything absolute. Now, let's look at a mixed reference. In this particular example, row 1 will stay locked in because of the dollar sign. The column will change relative to location because it doesn't have a dollar sign on it. And you can see, again, if we copy that across, the columns change, but the row does not. And then if we have an absolute reference so that the column and the row is locked, as we copy that across, it does not change relative to location. It's going to be J1, J1, J1 all the way across. Okay, So I know that's a very quick review. It's not an extremely... Um, detailed explanation of relative mixed and absolute so if you need additional assistance with that please you know do a Google search or refer to a textbook or a Microsoft press book for a more formal review uh, for references now let's take a look at another example here we've got some quantities we've got a unit price and we need to know an amount for these so we can just put in a simple formula that multiplies the quantity times the price now these are relative references so when we autofill this formula notice how the references change and it picks up the right column and correct row um, for each amount. Now for the tax, the tax rate will be an absolute reference because we don't have a tax rate down here for um, like we do for quantities and unit prices. So for the tax formula we will multiply the amount by the tax rate and let's just try it without making it absolute and see what it does. And you can see how messy that is. Um, you know, cell reference M8 is correct because it's referencing this as K5. But then when we go to M9, it changes it to K6. We'll see there's nothing in K6. And then here you get an error because it's trying to multiply it by this uh, these words. And then here the formula multiplies okay, but that's wrong. That's not the tax rate. So that's why we want to make K5 absolute. And then it will not change when we copy the formula to the rest of the cells. Now let's look at defining order of operations. Here is the little phrase that we used when I was in middle school to help clear this up. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And the P stands for parentheses, E exponents, M multiplication, D division, A addition, and S subtraction. And the computer will perform the operations in that order. So if you see a formula that's something like this, you might be tempted to think, well, 5 plus 4 is 9, and then I'll multiply that by 3. But if you look over here, addition and subtractions are done last. So the multiplication would be done first. So then it would become 5 plus 12, which would yield 17. So if you are kind of rusty on the order of operations, please review those. You can also find more information about those at this article right here.
If you're ever in doubt about the order of operations and you know that certain parts of the equation need to be evaluated first, go ahead and put parentheses in just to force that. And then you can see here you have another example. And instead of using uh, constants, I used cells. And you can see here I just added uh, J8 and J9. We subtracted J10 and then we multiplied J11. So again, you would have to use those order of operations. Your multiplication would be done first. Now let's take a look at referencing cell ranges in formulas. And what I did, uh, this is very similar to what we did with the tax rate, but notice that I named it tax rate, tax rate 2. Okay, and then when we put in the formula, we will put the amount times, and we will use tax rate 2 instead of the cell reference. And then when you hit enter, it multiplies it out. And then you can use autofill. You know, and that may be something that some of you are interested in. It may be easier for you to use a reference like that, a name for a range or a cell, rather than using the dollar marks and the row and column references. That's totally up to you. And then lastly, I want to look at another formula that uses a named range. Here we've got the VLOOKUP formula. We've got some test scores. And we wanted this VLOOKUP formula to take that test score, look it up in the table over here, which is the grade scale table, and then return the appropriate letter grade. Okay, so I set up the grade scale table, and then I named it in the name box. And you can see how we used that in the VLOOKUP formula. So again, it's looking up the test score here, and that's indicated in the formula. Where does it look it up? It looks it up in the grade scale table here. And how do we get it to return the letter grade? We tell it to look in the second column of the grade scale, and that's what it does here. So again, just using a named range in a formula. And this concludes the review for utilizing cell ranges and references in formulas and functions.